Hello, I'm David D. Hilster. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist. I'm here to tell you the truth about science, something university professors won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly those science evangelists won't tell you. If you are here for the first time and you are one of those people who are a little skeptical or a lot skeptical of what comes out of the mainstream's mouth, what comes out in the articles, and you read it and you say, this is just doesn't seem real at all, well, then you've come to the right place. We have thousands of scientists around the world who we've documented and we know of who have PhDs from prestigious universities, who are prestigious engineers, some from NASA, and other, uh, other people like yourself who are just critical thinkers who love science. All of us trying to use critical thinking to see how this universe really works. I've been around these people for decades, and what do I know? Well, I know lots of models of the universe and new models of the universe that are way better than today's models, and they come from these great people. And if this is a channel that sounds interesting to you, look below. There's a subscribe button, a little bell next to it, and you can hit that. Subscribe, and you will be you will be alerted when I come up with a new video talking about how we critical thinkers look at the world. And today we're going to look at this article that says Einstein's equations allow a non-deterministic future inside some black holes. And this is from Science Daily from February 21st, 2018. Now, we people who work outside the mainstream. I get a lot of questions, especially from my subscribers who've been around for numbers of months. It's, Dave, what, what do you guys say about black holes? Well, first of all, we really normally don't call them black holes. Black holes sort of have a bad name. The idea is that there's a singularity in the middle that's an infinite point with infinite mass. Negativo, neg negative, no, that's not something we believe. We believe that everything's physical. This idea that you can have infinite point, the small point with infinite mass is doesn't, doesn't fit in a universe, a physical universe. So that's the first thing. So a lot of us call these things very dense objects. <laughs> very dense objects, if I can say it. One of those people who says that is Dr. Edward Dowdy from NASA. He's a retired NASA guy. And he has been disputing this idea that gravity is what's bending light. When in fact, he is saying it's the corona of suns that is bending light, that is bending light. But he also looks and talks about a lot about Sagittarius A. We're going to take a look at that. This is going to give you an example of how we look at what people call black hole. So what you have here in this X, this is Sagittarius in the constellations of Sag Sagittarius. And of course, you have this little X. Well, that X is the center of our galaxy. And they say in mainstream stream science, there's a big black hole. So if you push this, you should see everything being sucked in because black holes suck everything in, right? Oh, they're just like orbiting it. Um, that's not good. It's supposed to suck everything in. Well, I guess if you don't get close enough to the black hole. That... And I guess the other thing is too, is that Yes, it's very massive. Because watch this one whip around. Of course, uh, Dr. Edward Dowdy has actually calculated uh, what this, what that uh, mass should be according to uh, the ca his calculations, and it is very, very heavy and dense and big. But we don't look at it as a black hole that sucks everything up, and the reason you don't see it is because it's sucking light into it. It's not sucking much at all here. So uh, the idea in our outside of the mainstream is, is to say that there, it's a very dense object. It's not an infinite point with infinite mass. It's not this curvature of space-time. It is simply a really, really dense object. Maybe they're just nucleons from, the, from atoms all smashed together. We don't know. Well, some of us have uh, models about the universe. And those models will tell us what's going on. And there it goes. It's going off into it. And I have to stop it because it's giving me this loud mess that's happened before. So that's what we think of black holes. We don't think of them as radiating. So it's not they're black because they're not radiating. And it's sort of like this isn't radiating. It's got reflections, but it's not radiating. So if I put something in the middle of the universe that really doesn't reflect and doesn't radiate, it's going to look black. That's fine. So that part of it uh, we sort of agree on. Now we're going to talk about determinism. Determinism comes from the, when they do talk about it in this article, and that it says that normally determinism is key to any physical theory, which basically says there's only one outcome. You can't have 70 outcomes, that everything around you determines what's going on. Now, this is a little bit crazy because this article talks about non-deterministic black holes. 
Now that is, I'm going to get rid of this here, non-deterministic black holes versus deterministic world into a non-deterministic black hole. Let's just talk about determinism. What does that mean? Well, it means that there, that you don't have necessarily free will. Everything in the universe is going along the way. With everything. We're, the reason we're thinking is because of all the physical processes that are going in. Yes, I know this is philosophical. And if you don't agree with it, that's fine. I'm talking about the scientific part. So throw away that stuff. Don't just shut me off. Let's just talk about the scientific part of it. Determinism means that, yeah, everything around, everything that's uh, in the universe will determine what's going on with something else. Now, the difference in outside of the mainstream is we have people like Glenn Borkert who talk about this very uh, a lot. He is a natural philosopher, in my opinion, probably the greatest scientific philosopher of our generation. And he talks about infinity, and he also talk, talks about determinist, ter deterministic uh, a deterministic universe. And that's what he says is going on. So the idea outside the mainstream is that the idea that there's non-deterministic black holes or non-deterministic anything doesn't make sense to have one part of the universe one way and another part of the universe the other way. Outside the mainstream, most of us think that it is deterministic. And if those who don't think it's deterministic, everything's not deterministic. You can't have places where you, you have non-deterministic. But of course you can, because in this article you have this really, 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 really bizarre graph. Now on this graph, you have time in this direction going this way, and you have space going that way. You know, I'm not sure they even understand what that means. I think they've just drawn it so many times that they're convincing themselves what this means and making a diagram. But this is maybe as an X axis going toward you know, this would be a Y. Why is it that this is curving? This sort of looks like an X and Y axis, but they're saying this is time. Does that mean if I put a point right where my arrow is that it's going to be flowing this way because time flows and that it's going to go into the event horizon? Um, that light's going and traveling, it's going this way because if you have it, uh, time is pushing it that way because it can't go straight this way. Then you have this line of infinity I'm imagining that, what's that? On this side, there's nothing. That means it's like sort of Einstein's equations where you approach if any, you can't get past here. Um, I don't understand this. And this is one of the reasons it's all screwed up. Why black holes are screwed up and why people go and study these are screwed up and they have the Cauchy horizon because they draw all these diagrams and these diagrams and the math and this idea that you can actually put... Um, a coordinate system with time on it and space on it. What we think outside the mainstream science, you have three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. And that's what graphs are for. Time is something to measure movement. It's not, in this case, one of the dimensions. It's not a dimension. Time is in a dimension. Time is, time is movement. Everything that has to do with time is movement, movement of clocks to measure, to measure stuff. Uh, that's the way we, a lot of us look at it outside the mainstream. So this whole idea that you can even graph this, this, this is just, look at this for a while. And now I know there's going to be someone out there who's going to say, hey, Dave, I know how to explain it. Let me tell you. And they will justify the heck out of it. Of course. People write their dissertations on this. I mean, Couchy Horizon must have a dissertation and already have 10 grad students working on this thing and publishing papers. Where do they publish? Well, they pay publish in Physics Review here. You can see Physics Review Letters. So this is published in Physics Review Letters. But the, going back to the deterministic part is that when you look at determinism and you believe that there's only three dimensions in space, there's no infinite points and infinite mass, um, again, the deterministic part is you can only have all of it non-deterministic or all of it, some of it deterministic. Now, when you look at the actual uh, verbiage here and what people are talking about the the um, black holes, you start to see that you start to see things that just don't make sense. For those people who are just first tuning in on this, let's take a look at things that make you, in fact, cringe a little bit. Let's, let's look at this sentence, which is the title. You can't see forever in an expanding universe. Now, there's a where do I start? Here's what critical thinkers think about this. Expanding universe. Let's just start with that. The word universe, linguistically, one of my degrees, one my master's in, in math, my, my, I'm sorry, my bachelor's in math, my master's in linguistics. Universe means, as I say over and over and over and over and over again, everything, everything. There's nothing 
outside of a universe. There's no two universes. There's no parallel universes. The universe is everything. The idea that the universe is expanding makes no sense. The universe is infinite in a lot of our opinions. It goes on forever. You know, some people say the universe wraps around and comes back to where it was. I know that's sort of a loop kind of idea. That's one of the people, one, some of the people outside of the mainstream think that. Okay, that's fine. But most of us think that the universe is infinite. It's everything in there. And the idea that expanding, it mass may be expanding if you believe in the Big Bang, which most of us don't. Um, mass is expanding uh, into space, but that's not the expanding universe. It's bad word. You can't see forever an expanding universe. Well, what does C mean? Does that mean the light? I think that's what we're sort of saying, that light. So mainstream, um, the mainstream science doesn't know really what light is, what gravity is. And if you say they do, they don't have a physicality for it. They call it a wave. They call it a particle. They call it a wave particle. They call uh, gravity bending of space time, uh, space, the fabric of space time, the fabric of space. I've even heard the fabric of time, the bending of time. They don't know what it is. So when you look at those kinds of things, you, you really go bazonkers. Um, another thing that is uh, that we, uh, I, I took a look in this article that I thought was really interesting are all the different ways they have for black holes, all the things that, oh, oh, let's talk about the black holes first. But you have things like um, the Reisner Nordstrom de Sitter black holes, and that is uh, non rotating black holes with large electrical charge. I, I just, they just don't have enough, they don't have a foundation for any of this stuff, folks. Charge is an arbitrary thing where we put pluses and minus and say things attract magically. Um, if, you don't, if you want to look up charge in my uh, videos where I say charge is an arbitrary attribute where we put on things and it's, it's not a fundamental thing. Lots of us outside the mainstream of science know that and believe that. So that's really bizarre. So you have that one, but if you go further down, you get one that's called black holes called the kerr newman de Sitter black holes which he argues are smooth and rotating. So you can see, they've got, this is the way I would put this. I mean, just between you and me, this is unicorn world. This is Harry Potter. This is an imaginary universe where people are making imaginary things and they've got math and all kinds of stuff. And they talk very profoundly and make you feel stupid if you don't understand what they say. If, 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 if you don't understand this graph, they're going to tell you and look at you like you're nuts. So what can you say? All right, let's take a look at one more thing. I'm just going to search for this. Einstein. Um, that is, if I spell it right, Einstein, let's take a look at what they say about Einstein. It's always interesting. Uh, of course, they're saying Einstein's equations allow. What does that mean? Okay, that means that Einstein's safe. We can't say he's wrong because, oh my gosh, if we say he's wrong, that's like saying Gandhi was Hitler. Can't say that. So let's see what they say about Einstein because they're going to, of course, tell him. Here, here's here's really great, great way that how we worship Einstein, of course, and that is, but, but the findings do not meet uh, mean that Einstein's equation of general relativity, which which so far perfectly described the evolution of, of the cosmos. You don't use that when you use journalism, when you're writing, you're a journalist. When you write about science, everything is theoretical, nothing is proven, nothing will be proven, things can be supported, the models can be sort of good, but they're, they're not perfect. No way. And of course, you get like Tyson, the, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Of course, they're not perfect. It's perfect up to a point. But in the middle of black holes, we have to use string theory. Ah, shoot me now. This is crazy. This is the way we look at it with critical thinkers. So if you think the same thing, the difference is we have actually answers to these. So if you want to know what we think about this, we can actually describe things to you and tell you what we think is going on. And that's why you need to hang out on this channel. So you can see he works perfectly, okay? Um, anything else? Einstein's general, general relativity predict the predict the world inside the black hole. Okay, that's also important because that that means you know if Einstein predicts the uh, inside of the black hole, then the inside of the black hole, the way they're talking about, it, it's got to be right. So you know, um, there are some exact solutions of Einstein's equations that are perfectly smooth with no kinks, no tidal forces going to infinity. Um, 
again, this is in within their world, and they're worried about going to infinity because that really explodes in their face a lot of times. But uh, you can see, basically, the idea is you can sort of entice people that Einstein could be wrong. That's what they always do. You go, oh my gosh, Einstein's wrong. Who's the next guy? But it turns out, no, he's not wrong. We found out, you know, that it may be just a part of it, and he didn't get everything, and someone else come along, etc. So we've talked about black holes, what they are, very dense objects. We've talked about determinism. Well, in this universe, they have places where over here it's deterministic, over here it's not. Maybe in this question mark it's non-deterministic, but over here it's deterministic. What? Can't be. Logical, can't happen, no way, not even allowed. You'd lose a debate in any debate class. But of course, in science, everything is, we are so muscular bound that we can take anything, we can take any punch to our face to tell, tell us any crazy ideas. So yeah, deterministic, it's either all deterministic or it's not. You can't have parts of the universe that it is. Of course, we know about the universe. It's everything infinite, this whole idea that there's a infinite point with infinite mass. And last but not least, we talk about um, the black hole science, which is just so bizarre with these graphs and with uh, always making sure Einstein comes along for the ride because every time you put Einstein in it, people are going to read it, people are going to come to it. If in fact, I'm going to have Einstein in my tags. A lot of people will come because of that name. And of course, Einstein is holy. He has gone to college or should go to college or whatever. But anyways, I hope this is giving you an idea of how we critical thinkers think when we read these articles. Because we do have not only reasons why we can tell you it's wrong, we can tell you don't even bother with this because it's so far in the Harry Potter world, it's not even worth unraveling. Or in fact, we have better models to describe something there. And that's more interesting than unraveling bad logic, bad ideas, or just a fairy tale land. So remember what I say, don't take my word for it or anybody else's on faith. You want to stay critical, you want to stay thinking. I'm David D. Hilser. I am your science therapist. I will cure you of this disease of simply believing everything that you see and become a critical thinker and make up your own mind. You can disagree with me, but at least you have to think about it with a critical mind. Ciao for now.